വെൽക്കം ടു എ ടി സി എം ദ എമർജൻസി മെഡിസിൻ ചാനൽ യെസ് എ സിക്സ്റ്റി ഇയർ ഓൾഡ് ഫീമെയിൽ വിത്ത് നോ പ്രീവിയസ് കോമോർബിറ്റീസ് പ്രസൻറ്റ് ടു ദ ഇ ആർ വിത്ത് കംപ്ലൈൻസ് ഓഫ് കഫ് ഓഫ് ടു വീക്സ് ഡ്യൂറേഷൻ ആൻഡ് ബ്രത്ത്ലെസ്നെസ് ഓഫ് ത്രീ ഡേയ്സ് ഡ്യൂറേഷൻ ഓൺ അവർ ഇനിഷ്യൽ ടെൻ സെക്കൻഡ് അസസ്മെൻറ്റ് ദ പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് വാസ് കോൺഷ്യസ് ഓറിയൻറ്റഡ് ആൻഡ് ഒബെയിങ് കമാൻഡ്സ് കമ്മിങ് ടു പ്രൈമറി സർവേ എയർ വേ ദർ വാസ് നോ ഹോൾസ്നെസ് നോ ഗർഗ്ലിങ് നോ സ്ട്രൈഡർ കമ്മിങ് ടു ബ്രീത്തിങ് ദ റെസ്പിറേറ്ററി റേറ്റ് ഓഫ് തേർട്ടി പെർ മിനിറ്റ് സാച്ചുറേഷൻ ഓഫ് നയൻറ്റി ടു പെർസെൻറ്റേജ് ഇൻ റൂം എയർ കമ്മിങ് ടു സർക്കുലേഷൻ ദ പൾസ് റേറ്റ് ഓഫ് ഹൺഡ്രഡ് ആൻഡ് ടെൻ ബീറ്റ്സ് പെർ മിനിറ്റ് വിത്ത് എ ബി പി ഓഫ് വൺ ഫിഫ്റ്റി ബാർ നയൻറ്റി മില്ലിമീറ്റേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് മെർക്കുറി ഓൾ പെർഫെറൽ പൾസസ് വർ ഈക്വലി പാൽപ്പബിൾ അറ്റ് ദിസ് പോയിൻറ്റ് ടു ലാർജ് വർ ഐ വി കാൻലാസ് വർ ഇൻസേർട്ടഡ് കമ്മിങ് ടു ഡിസബിലിറ്റി ജി സി എസ് ഓഫ് ഫിഫ്റ്റീൻ ബൈ ഫിഫ്റ്റീൻ ബൈലാറ്ററൽ പ്യൂപ്പിൾ ഈക്വലി റിയാക്ടിംഗ് ടു ലൈറ്റ് ഓൺ ടു എക്സ്പോഷർ പാർട്ട് ടെമ്പറേച്ചർ ഓഫ് നയൻറ്റി എയ്റ്റ് പോയിൻറ്റ് ടു ഡിഗ്രി ഫാരൻ ഹീറ്റ് വിത്ത് എ ജി ആർ ബി എസ് ഓഫ് വൺ സിക്സ്റ്റി മില്ലിഗ്രാം പെർ ഡെസിലിറ്റർ കമ്മിങ് ടു അഡ്ജൻസ് ഓഫ് പ്രൈമറി സർവേ വി ടു ക്വാൻ ഇ സി ജി വിത്ത് ഷോയിങ് സൈനസ് ടക്കി കാഡിയ ഇനി ലങ് ഡിസീസ് പീപ്പിളറി എസിമെട്രി ിംഗ് <laughs> respiratory failure yes. we started the patient on uh, o2 3 liter via nasal prongs cbc crp was taken showing a total count of 5000 crp of 10 x-ray was taken at this point of time which shows a homogeneous opacity in the right lung in the right lungs homogeneous opacity in the right lung right. what are the differential diagnosis okay. and how do you confirm that it is fluid in the in emergency room uh, either uh, the causes of homogeneous opacity can be a consolidation mm-hmm. uh, pleural effusion can be another mm-hmm. third one mm-hmm. collapse. collapse collapse consolidation effusion how do you differentiate all these things uh, between the rib spaces okay collapse mostly will have a narrow, narrow rib space okay mediastinum may be shifted to towards that side either heart or uh, trachea how do you confirm it in emergency room uh, we can do a usc usc okay that is very important when you have a white patch in the lung homogeneous cons- like consolidation like patch in the uh, lungs normally we percuss and see whether it is stony dull uh, reduced movement all these things but in emergency room you can use ultrasound and find out whether fluid is there or not okay then we come to the uh, ample history a 60 year old female no previous comorbidities present to the er with complaints of 2 weeks duration of cough and 3 days duration of breathlessness mm-hmm. cough was non productive and uh, not associated with any other symptoms mm-hmm. uh, non productive cough where all you get foreign body aspiration well, 3 weeks uh, non productive cough is not foreign body acute uh, non productive cough can be foreign body aspiration Three weeks. Hmm? Pleural effusion is the most important cause. That is the most important cause for non-productive cough. Okay. Interstitial lung disease can be non-productive cough, but that is a chronic process. In, within two, three weeks, if the patient is having a uh, non-productive cough, mostly that goes in favor of a pleural effusion when you have a picture like this. Okay. Uh, breathlessness was of three days duration. It was gradual, progressive. and right now the patient was having an mmrc of grade 4 mm-hmm. no history of any chest pain no history of any fever loss of weight evening rise of temperature no history of any uh, palpitations orthopnea pnd mm-hmm. uh, no history of any allergies <coughs> no history of any similar illness in the past the patient is currently not on any medications at the last meal was around 2 uh, pm you are asking no history of past history in a pleural effusion uh, so history of any tb in the past one is tb mm-hmm. then Uh, any malignancy in the past kind of smits mm-hmm. okay. that's a good question SLE hypoalbuminemia 
anemia so how many condition can have recurrent pleural effusion okay uh, coming to general examination uh, no pallor no ictus no cyanosis no clubbing no generalized lymphadenopathy or pedal edema which side lymph nodes you want to palpate in this patient what is the most important any patient who is having a pleural effusion you have to examine in detail okay whether the patient is in distress or not we have to examine which area you want to look for the lymph nodes Uh, axillary axilla most important lymph nodes for lung is axillary lymph nodes okay you can even train to the supraclavicular nodes but axillary is most important here okay coming to systemic examination upper respiratory tract was normal jvp was uh, not elevated coming to examination of lower respiratory tract on inspection chest movements were reduced on the right side the patient was also using accessory muscles of respiration coming to palpation trachea was slightly shifted to the left side uh, the chest movements clearly decreased on the right side coming to percussion dull note were noted on the right side and auscultation there was decreased breath sounds on the right side so clinically if you want to diagnose pleural effusion you need to have a reduced breath sounds reduced movements stony dullness of percussion and mediastinum may shift to opposite side these are the clinical findings of pleural effusion okay in general So our uh, initial uh, diagnosis was the patient was diagnosed with a case of right sided pleural effusion mm-hmm. uh, effusion so when you have a patient with pleural effusion what is the most important thing you had rule out from the patient from a er physician's point of view quantification whether patient is toxic or not that is the most important whether that is empyema or not not uh, uh, or a normal pleural effusion normal means uh, it, it can be something else but not pus Okay, so if that is pus immediately. We have to drain. We we no need to wait for anyone. We have to drain the pus. Okay, if it is not pus, we need we can take time. So toxicity is very important in emergency room. Okay. Uh, since the patient was having severe tachypnea and with a moderate to massive pleural effusion, mm-hmm. initially we plan for a uh, diagnostic and both therapeutic thoracosynthesis. Okay. So when you are uh, tapping the fluid, how much fluid you can tap? a uh, maximum we can go till 1 uh, liter so 1.5 liter is the maximum why, why you don't want to re- remove more than that uh, because it can lead to uh, either one is pneumothorax can also do re reexpansion pneumothorax even reaction. if you uh, drain 5 ml it can produce pneumothorax that is not the reason reexpansion yes. pulmonary edema reexpansion pulmonary edema is the most common side effect when you remove massive amount of fluid from the chest what is the mechanism of that sudden expansion of the lungs sudden expansion of the lungs can retain some amount of water patient can go to pulmonary edema how do you treat that oxygen you treat like normally what you are treat, do using you put uh, uh, C, cpap or bipap niv will be started lasix will be given oxygen will be given but uh, if you are tapping like uh, 100 ml fluid some syringes may be you may be using 50 ml syringe if that 50 ml when it come out patient is having breathlessness inject back that fluid to the lungs that can relieve some amount of symptoms and you, like you told you treat like any other pulmonary edema okay so reexpansion pulmonary edema is very important okay and we started the patient on o2 also so okay. this is a saturation uh, for detail examination uh, we have uh, sent the patient and that show a mass in the right breast of size 1.5 into 1 cm okay so we are suspecting uh, secondary to the malignancy that is a cause of pleural effusion okay. uh, but the tapable fluid was of straw colored and not of any hemorrhagic so all uh, breast masses breast masses can produce pleural effusion no oh, yeah, they show uh, they show it is a malignancy if it spreads to mediastinum to axilla then it can produce ideally we have to do an ultrasound and see what what is the axillary lymph nodes normally when you cannot palpate sometimes you also you have to do an ultrasound and see whether axillary lymph nodes are there when you are taking a ct scan you have to see whether mediastinal nodes are there multiple infiltrates are there bones you have to check if nothing is there this pleural effusion may be an independent entity uh, other than the mass you are seeing in the breast most of the masses in the breast are not malignancy that's why but the, when we consider the age of the patient there is a high chance for malignancy so we are waiting for the uh, cytology reports sir. okay report reports oh, how do you diagnose pleural fluid suppose you tap uh, 10 ml or 20 ml of fluid 
How do you make a diagnosis? Uh, that? You can be differentiated between transudative and exudative effusion. Okay. Uh, it was the lights criteria mm. which says that uh, exudative fluid if one or more of the criteria is met mm-hmm. uh, the lights criteria is like the pleural fluid uh, protein divided by serum protein more than 0.5 mm. pleural fluid ldh divided by serum ldh more than 0.6 mm. pleural fluid ldh more than 2 by 3 of the normal okay. upper limit so of that tells you whether the fluid is <laughs> exudative that means inflammatory or non inflammatory mm-hmm. Inflammatory condition can be bacterial infection, viral infection, tubercular infection, malignancy. How do you diagnose that then? Uh, be, uh, one, either based on the gram stain, we can also send for total count, differential count, cytology, mm. gram stain, etc. Counts TB. are most important. Counts are elevated in? Infections. Yes, bacterial yeah, infections. infections. Counts are normal in? Malignancy. Viral yeah. infection. And counts are abnormal in? Abnormal cells are seen in? Malignancy. malignancy. Okay. Then which type of cells it is increased in bacterial infection? Neutrophils. Neutrophils. TB and uh, viral? Lymphocytes. Lymphocytes. Okay. Then what else you will see? ADA. ADA. Adenosine uh, DMA. Yes. What is the levels which tell you that it is tuberculosis? Above 50. Above 50 or 40. 40. Uh, suspicion of tuberculosis can be there. Associated things also has to be there. In TB pleural effusion, can FB will be positive? No, sir. No. Productive sputum. So. FB will not be positive in uh, pleural effusion. Only if there is an empyema that has got a tract from the lung, then it, AFB can be positive. Otherwise, TB pleural effusion is a reactive effusion. There, uh, AFB will not be positive. Okay. If there is a sputum, then you have to check it. Okay. Now, axillary lymph nodes you have to see, mediastinal lymph nodes you have to see, and the mass you have to evaluate. How do you evaluate the mass in the breast? So you can either go for a, a mammogram that will tell you whether the malignancy is there. Suppose the pain is there, we cannot uh, subject the patient for mammogram. Then you can go for an ultrasound breast and see and uh, take an FNIC from the breast. That will be an ideal thing. Okay. CT shows and mediation and lymph nodes. No, sir. Okay. Only uh, no, uh, there is a mass no, with pleural lipid. Yeah. There is a high chance of malignancy, but uh, there is no blood in the pleural fluid. Yeah. So, chances of malignancy induced pleural effusion, the chance of uh, uh, hemorrhagic fluids are very, very high. That is not there. Okay. Any other problem patient is having other than this pleural effusion? No, sir. No other symptoms. Okay. In pleural effusion, when will you start steroids? Which type of pleural effusion you start steroids? Any autoimmune causes? Okay. One is autoimmune cause. Then... Tuberculosis, massive pleural effusion due to tuberculosis. They are used uh, steroids. Small pleural effusion due to tuberculosis, we don't use. Any massive effusion, rapidly accumulating effusion, even in malignancy, if the patient is symptomatic and we are not able to treat the malignancy, that means palliative care, you can use steroids because that reduces the inflammation, reduces the problem. If it is a malignancy, continuously if patient develops pleural effusion, what is the treatment for that? Pleurodesis. Okay, you remove the pleura or inject some talc to the uh, both the between both the pleura so that pleural effusion can be relieved. Okay, now how is the patient now? Right now we are waiting for the results. We have tapped uh, at around thousand ml of fluid. Mm. So uh, the tachypnea of the patient respect distress has been decreased. Mm. Uh, we have keep on a nasal prongs and uh, the oxygen is maintaining. So. Should we put a ICD for this patient? Uh, if we are suspecting a malignancy or there is a recurrent pleural effusion. Mm. If it is a malignancy induced pleural effusion or if it is an empyema, then you have to put ICD. Nice. Otherwise, this patient is not toxic. This patient, we are not suspecting at present a pleural effusion due to malignancy. Then it may not be required. Anything else? Patient is improving. Okay. Thank you.